many ways, many times it, it goes off the wrong end. Um, but I'm talking about building yourself in a good, healthy manner. Sometimes a good word for somebody else could actually save a life. Do you know that? Someone could be so down in the dumps that you could speak a good word to a stranger, to a coworker. You could change your life. And that takes intent, and that takes honesty. It takes honesty. You know, there, there's a phrase in Spanish I got hair that, that basically means I, I, I have hair, but I don't have hairs on my tongue. In other words, I, I don't filter. I say what I think. I say what I think. I'm a very honest person. And ma many times that's an excuse for talking garbage. You know? And usually most people that I've come across in my experience that say that is because they talk garbage. That's my experience. They don't, they don't take time to filter. They don't take time to filter their minds. They don't have time to filter their thoughts. They're always in a rush. They're always in a rush, and, and they hurt people. But for you to heal someone, that also has to be intentional. And it has to be honest. And that takes a lot of meditation and honest observation. Um, and of course, those of you that are more sophisticated, you don't criticize, you make observations. <laughs> and that's how some of us get away with it. <laughs> well, I'm not criticizing, I'm making an observation. You know, I'm not a racist, I'm just making an observation. <laughs> um, and, well, sometimes to make a godly observation, it has to be honest, it takes a lot of reflection, because the person will pick up that you're not being sincere, that you're not being sincere about what you're trying to tell them in terms of building them up. So that takes meditation. That takes being in the presence of God. One, uh, one blessing and reaction that I remember in my life was my mom had tried to commit suicide, and I survived the summer blaming myself. Uh, and things went downhill. I was very pessimistic. And guess what? My pessimism, my, my pessimism paid off because I wrote poems. And I got three of them published in the yearbook. And all the teachers in the junior high school, they came down to my official classes. They wanted to meet this kid that wrote these great poems. And all of them, most of them said, boy, you're a great writer. But man, I like this. You're so dark and you're so pessimistic. And I had to look that up. <laughs> and I said, um, wow. I, I didn't know how bad of a dark place I was. I was very cynical. And that carried on for many years because, you know, kids, when they start getting on their own, they tend, that's a phrase also, they tend to be cynical. Um, and that's a way of analyzing things and filtering things out in society. But when you're in a dark place and you're stuck there, it, it could be very dangerous. And Miss Benjamin, my homeroom teacher, she pulled me aside. And she did something that I always remember. She said, Jeff, it was toward the end of the year. We were graduating, going out to high school. She said, Jeff, I want you to promise me that you're going to go to high school. You're going to finish high school. I want you to promise me that you're going to finish college. She says, you have a gift. You have a beautiful gift. Don't throw it away. You've got to harness it. You've got to polish it. But promise me that you will not drop out of school. And she kept looking at me and, and touched my shoulder to get my attention and looked me straight in the eye to, to make sure that I was listening. She said, I mean it. And you know what? I saw the honesty in her eyes. She had a hope for me. I never forget that. She may have not been a church lady. She had an impact on my life. And that took a lot of consideration. So we take time to build ourselves in positive ways and also intent to build other people up and change their lives. And that takes meditation and concentration. 